Greetings, and welcome to another installment from the Patchwork Productions Learn to Crochet for Beginners series. In this video, you will learn about increasing and decreasing in the row. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Stitch, and Patchwork Productions is all about learning and doing crochet. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss another installment. Without further ado, let's get started. So for this video, I'll be using some medium worsted weight yarn or weight four yarn, and I'll be using a US J10 or 5.75 millimeter hook. And today we're going to be learning how to increase and decrease in crochet. Now increasing uh, is, as it sounds, adding stitches to, uh, if we're working in the row, your row. If you're working in the round, your round. And decreasing is likewise decreasing, removing stitches from the row or from the round. Uh, we'll be doing it in the row for this tutorial. And basically increasing and decreasing allows us to shape our work of crochet uh, by adding stitches in certain places and removing them from others. It allows us to make different shapes and we'll see examples of this um, later in this tutorial video. So I'll just make a quick row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'll make a quick row of single crochets. Today we're going to learn how to increase and, and decrease for the elementary stitches that we learned uh, in the previous tutorial video. So if you haven't seen those, if you don't know what those stitches are or how to make them, I encourage you to check them out. Although I could presume that you do know by watching this video. Now to increase uh, the single crochet and to decrease the single crochet, it's basically the same for the half double crochet as well. So I will not um, explicitly do the half double crochet. Also, just to be let you be aware that all of the terminology that I'll be using in this video will be the US terminology for the stitches. So let me just finish this row here. And then we can begin. All right, so let's just count this to be sure. It's always good practice to count your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Good, so I have 12 single crochets here and we can begin. So I'll chain one and turn my work. Now the increase is pretty simple and is basically the same principle for all of uh, the various uh, stitches. I'll make two regular single crochets here and then to do the single crochet increase we are going to make a regular single crochet but then into that same hole that we just made that first single crochet, we're going to work back into that same hole and make another single crochet. Let me pull out some extra yarn here. It's a bit tangled. Okay, and so this is an increase because we've added one extra stitch where there would normally only be one. And so if I were to just go ahead and finish this row right now, we would have 13 stitches in row two because our first row of single crochets simply had 12. Now, the increase can be done uh, basically as many times as you want. Uh, and so I can go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. And then let's do another increase, except I will do a double increase. So I'm gonna do the normal single crochet that would be there. I'm going to 
work another single crochet into that same stitch and then into that very same stitch again I'm going to work another single crochet. So now in that one stitch I've added two extra single crochets in addition to the one that would normally be there. And so if I were to finish this row I would now have uh, it would be 15 stitches because we added the one from the first increase and two from the second increase. And so this is how we increase the single crochet and it would be the same for the half double crochet. All you would do is make a half double crochet in the stitch and then make another half double crochet in the same stitch. Now, as you can see here, not sure if you can quite notice it, but this increasing has already started to change the shape of our, uh, of our row here. It looks more like a boomerang or a hockey stick, whichever way you want to look at it. I suppose it's a hockey stick more like this, but uh, these uh, extra stitches that we have are causing the top to have to stretch because it needs more room to hold more stitches, whereas the bottom has less stitches. And so you can see here it's already started to change shape. So already we can see the power of using uh, increasing to change the shape. Now let's decrease. So going to make a regular single crochet in the next stitch and let's do another one just all right so now to decrease it's very simple we have to start making a single crochet but then stop just before the last step I like explaining it this way because remember to make a single crochet we insert our hook into the loop yarn over and draw a loop and it's simple because then all we do is yarn over and draw another loop and that's our single crochet but we have to stop before that last step and begin making another one so we yarn over draw that loop and now before we finish making the single crochet we insert into the next stitch so not this one we only go back into this one for an increase but we're trying to decrease so we insert into the next stitch draw a loop and now we have three loops on the hook and so now we would yarn over and draw through all three loops it's the same process for the half double crochet now this is a decrease um, in terms of stitching terminology this would be considered a single crochet two together uh, when we learn how to read patterns, we'll see that this is abbreviated as SC, which is the abbreviation for single crochet, and then two, and then TOG, or T-O-G. Um, and that is the abbreviation for single crochet two together, because basically we had uh, two stitches down here in this first row that we worked one stitch into at the top. So we took two stitches and made it one. So that's why it's called a single crochet two together and also why it's decreasing because now that's one less stitch that we have. Now you can also do a double decrease which would just be skipping one of the stitches and then doing a regular single crochet two together. So in this case to make a double decrease we're not going to work into this one, we're going to work into the next one. So we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, and now before completing the single crochet, we're going to insert into the next stitch, draw a loop, yarn over, draw through all three loops. So we just skipped one of the stitches and uh, did our regular single crochet two together. And so this allowed us to skip two stitches or decrease two of the stitches. So now we increased once, then twice, and then we decreased once and then twice. So we should have 12 stitches in this row because we increased and decreased the same amount of time. So let's count this, not including our loop. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And so that is what we should have. 
Now, these are just techniques. There are many ways to increase and decrease because the principle behind increasing and decreasing is just adding stitches or removing stitches so that the next row or round you have to work, there are more stitches to work into than were on the previous row. So I'm going to chain one and we're going to do this again just to get the hang of it. I'm going to make two regular single crochets. And again, you can see that the shape has changed. The increase made the top larger and the decrease made the bottom larger because there are more stitches down here than up here and there are more stitches up here than are down there. So we have a little wave now. So let's do a single increase. We're going to insert our hook and make a single crochet, but then into that same stitch that we just made that single crochet, we're going to go back into it and we're going to make another single crochet. So now we have two stitches in that one loop. Let's single crochet once and let's do a double increase. Actually, let's have some fun. Let's do a triple increase. So we're going to make a single crochet into that same stitch that we just made that single crochet. We're going to work another single crochet and then we're going to do that again, the same stitch. We're going to work another single crochet and then the same stitch. We're going to work another single crochet. So now we added three extra single crochets into that one stitch. So this is going to be pretty interesting to decrease. Let's do it like this. Let's do a single crochet. Well, nah, let's just do a single decrease. So we're going to insert our hook yarn over. Before we finish that last step of the single crochet, we're going to start another single crochet, insert into the next stitch. So make sure you don't insert back into the same hole. We, for the decrease, we have to go into the next stitch that doesn't have any stitch worked into it. And we're going to yarn over and now there are three loops on the hook. And so we're going to yarn over and draw through all three loops. So that's a single decrease. And now let's work a double decrease. So to do that, we're going to skip one stitch and work into the next one and do the same thing, single crochet two together. So we've started a single crochet in two separate stitches and now we have three loops on the hook. So we're going to yarn over and draw through all three. That is a double decrease. And let's do one more single crochet two together. Yarn over, draw a loop, insert into the next stitch, draw a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, draw through all three. And so once again, at the end of all this, we should still only have 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because we made a single increase, a triple increase, and then we did a, a double decrease and two single decreases or single crochet two together. And so at the end of this, we still have 12 stitches. So that is decreasing and increasing for the single crochet. Same principle applies for the half double crochet. Now for the double crochet, I'm going to chain two and I'm actually not going to count this chain for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm just not going to count the chain as, uh, a, as a half double crochet. I mean, as a double crochet. So I'm going to actually work into the first stitch. I'm just going to work with the 12 stitches that we have here. And I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to make a double crochet. So for the purpose of this tutorial, this chain, I only chained two and it does not count as a double crochet. So this is our one and only double crochet. And I'm going to make another one. Double crochet. Now let's do the double crochet increase. It's the same principle. You simply make more double crochets in a certain stitch. So this next stitch we have here, 
we're going to work two double crochets into it. So we're just going to go as normal, make a double crochet, and then into that same stitch that we just worked this double crochet, we're going to work another double crochet, the same stitch. And so now we've added a double crochet to our row because we worked two into one stitch. Now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to work two more. So now we'll have a triple double crochet increase right here because we've added three double crochets extra into one stitch. And my yarn is all tangled. There. So I'm going to work a few more regular double crochets. And then we can see how to do the double crochet decrease. Now this is where it differs ever so slightly from the single crochet decrease. It's still the same principle, but the method that you go about to do it is where the difference comes. Oops. About to make a single crochet there. So the principle of working the stitch to the last step and then beginning the next one still applies. But for the double crochet, because we're adding height, there's a yarn over, there's an extra step, we're going to have to continue a little bit more. So this would be a double crochet two together for just a single um, double crochet decrease. Um, abbreviation would be DC to TOG. Um, but to do this, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook, and begin a double crochet. Draw a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, draw through two. Now, remember, the principle is just before the last step is when we begin the next one. So instead of finishing this, which would make a double crochet, we're going to leave these two loops on the hook and begin the next double crochet in the next stitch where no stitch has been worked into. So we worked into this stitch, but now just before we finish the double crochet, we're going to work a new double crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over to make this double crochet insert the hook into the next stitch, draw a loop, four loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over and only draw through two of the loops. And so now we have two halfway done uh, double crochets and three loops on the hook. And now we draw through all three loops and that allows us to join two double crochets into one stitch at the top. So we've decreased it. We've taken two stitches and made it into one. A little bit of subtraction, some basic math here. And so that is a double crochet two together or a double crochet decrease. Now for a uh, double decrease, it's the same as the single decrease in the fact that we skip a stitch and then do a regular double crochet two together. So we're just going to skip this stitch right here and work into the next one. Begin the double crochet, draw the loop, draw through two loops. Before we finish the double crochet, because we're decreasing, we're going to work into the next stitch, yarn over, because we're working another double crochet, draw the loop, draw through only two loops. So now we have two incomplete double crochets. We have three loops on the hook, and we can yarn over and draw through all three. And so we've just made another decrease. This is a double decrease. So we skipped the stitch and then double crochet two together. And so now we're left with one more stitch, yarn over, insert into that stitch. And I'll just make a regular double crochet. And if all has gone well, we should still have 12 stitches because I'm increasing and decreasing the same amount of time. So let's count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we have a pretty interesting shape right here. Little curl because of all the increasing and decreasing and I'm kind of increasing in similar locations uh, on the stitch. So for each row, so it kind of keeps a general uh, shape. But uh, that's increasing and decreasing for the double crochet. And now I'll do 
treble or triple crochet. I'm going to chain three again for the purpose of this increasing and decreasing tutorial. The chain is not going to be counted as a treble crochet. It's just there to add height. So I will work my first treble crochet into the first stitch that's right there. And the same principles apply for the treble crochet and increase is as simple as adding more stitches into one of the stitches that's available. So we have this stitch here. We're going to work. Uh, I'll just do two treble crochet and I did not do that right. There we go. So one treble crochet and then into that same stitch because we're going to increase. I'm going to work another treble crochet. There we go. And then I'm going to work a regular treble crochet into the next stitch. And now I'm going to, in the next stitch, work another increase. Whoops, there goes my yarn again. I'll work another increase, except I'll do a triple increase. So we have one treble crochet in the same stitch. We're going to work two treble crochets. And now one last time in that same stitch we're going to work another treble crochet. So I've increased two times here. The last time I increased one time. So we have three extra stitches. And my yarn is very tangled. Give me one moment while I untangle this whole ball. All right. And now we can move on to decreasing. Uh, we should decrease the same amount of time so we keep our stitch count. So I'm just going to make one treble crochet regular in this next stitch. And now we can decrease. Same principle. This would be a treble crochet two together or triple crochet two together, which would just be TC2 TOG or TOG. And we have to work the stitch to the last step and then just before the last step we'll begin making the next one in the next stitch so that we can decrease. So we're going to start making a treble crochet in this stitch. One, two, and now if I finish this step right here, yarn over and draw through two loops, that's going to be a treble crochet, but we're decreasing. And so we're going to leave those two loops on the hook and begin the next treble crochet in the next stitch. Yarn over twice, insert hook into the next stitch, not the same stitch, but the next stitch. And now we're going to draw a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, three loops left on the hook, two separate incomplete treble crochets, join them together. We have now joined two treble crochets into one stitch at the top. This is a single treble crochet decrease or a treble crochet two together. And now we can do a double treble crochet decrease, which would be skipping this stitch and working into the other two. So we're going to skip, insert into the next one, begin the treble crochet, but then not finish it. We're going to leave those two there. We're going to begin the next treble crochet in the next stitch that no stitch has been worked into. And then three loops left on the hook, two incomplete treble crochets, one skipped stitch here, yarn over, draw through all three loops on the hook, and now we have a double treble crochet decrease. <laughs> or I should say uh, a double treble crochet decrease two, I don't know, something that's not confusing. But we've decreased two stitches with the treble crochet stitch. And so now we can yarn over. Uh, I think we have two stitches left here. And hopefully I did this right. And we're going to have 12 stitches at the end of this. So if we count, 
we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Again, we're not including the turning chain. Uh, and so, yes, we have successfully increased and decreased the same amount of times. These are the basics. There's a bit more to increasing and decreasing when you're learning a new stitch. Um, there are different stitch patterns to learn. They may require you to do some level of increase or decreasing. Uh, if you're doing a different kind of increasing and decreasing, because I could have increased by adding several chains, or I could have decreased more by skipping more stitches, or whatever the pattern says, whatever you're trying to do, you can do it. And these are just the basic techniques that are generally used for increasing and decreasing. Now, as I said earlier, uh, increasing and decreasing allows you to shape your work. You can kind of see that we started with a straight row and now we have something that looks sort of like a messed up anvil. Uh, but there are you know, better shapes to make with increasing and decreasing and I have some examples right here. Here we have an oval uh, this is a triangle, and this is a square that is not traditional. And so, believe it or not, everything here, including this oval, is actually worked in the row. I was very fascinated when I learned about this because, you know, I always thought if you want something round, you have to work in the round. But that's not technically completely true. This is actually worked in the row. I won't go into very much detail on each of these, but for this one, basically, after you work basically a foundation chain of, oh, six stitches, I mean, you could do whatever you want, but say you make six chains, and let me uh, demonstrate here, just so that you can get an idea. Basically, when we make our foundation chains, I've always said in my tutorial videos, work into the back bumps on the underside of the V. So I'm going to make four, five. And so we have this little bump. We have the Vs and the bumps. And you work into the bump. Let me just make a single crochet right here so that you get the idea. And so that's how we work into, you know, the foundation chain. I mean, there are other ways, but that's just the way I use. And so after you make it to the end, you chain one, continue if you're doing single crochets or whatever stitch you're doing. But for the oval here, basically what you do is, when you get to the end, you would increase into this stitch so that you have, oh, three stitches here. And then you would simply work on the side with the Vs. So instead of chaining one and going back, you just work on the other side. And so this allows you to work on this side increase, work on this side, increase, work on this side, and you keep going like that and it grows in size and so you can make an oval working in the row. So I found that very fascinating. Then we have this here. This is a triangle and it's very simple. The general concept behind it is that you increase at the beginning and end of your row for one of your rows, alternating, and then the next one would be just a straight row of single crochets in all the rows, in all the stitches. And then the next row, you would increase on both ends. So let me just demonstrate what it would look like. So this would be the row where I would uh, be increasing. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work into the first stitch. This is just single crochets. I'm going to work a single crochet and increase so I'll work another single crochet into that same stitch and then just work single crochets across until I get to the end and this can end up being very large when you're done although it may take some time oops and so when I get to the end into the last stitch I'm going to work one single crochet and another single crochet because I'm increasing. And so I've worked two at the beginning, one across, and then two in the end. And then the next row, I would just work single crochets across, no increasing. And for the sake of time, I will not go through this whole 
row, but basically I'd work single crochets all the way across, and then the next row I would again increase into the first stitch and the last stitch, and so on. It's a repeating pattern. And so you get this little triangle shape. And now if I were to begin decreasing, let's say I finish this row, but then decide to decrease at the end and the beginning, I could end up making a diamond. So increasing and decreasing is very versatile. And again, we have our last one. This is a square. Now, normally we make squares if we're working in the row, just make a foundation chain, make a row of single crochet or double crochet, or whatever stitch, chain up, go up, chain up, go up. But instead, this is worked from the corner and built out and each of the middle stitches is increased into. So I'll demonstrate. This is going to take just a little bit of time. But basically, I'm single crocheting just regular single crochets into all these stitches. But when I get to the middle, I'm going to increase so that I have three single crochets inside of that one stitch. So when I get there, we will see. All right, so this is the stitch in the middle. Into this stitch, I'm going to make one single crochet, two single crochets, three single crochets. And then I would continue going down the rest of this side, just regular single crochets. And what this does is that every single time I come up, because I increase three, there is one extra stitch aside from the middle stitch that I'm always going to be working three single crochets into. And so next time I come up this side, I'm going to have this extra stitch and I'm going to make three. And then the next time I come up, there's going to be another stitch. And so that's what allows it to grow in size. And this three makes that corner. When you first start, it doesn't quite look like a square. But as you get, oh, five rows out or whatever, I think I have maybe nine rows here or something. As you get more rows out, you'll end up seeing more of this square shape. And you can see where all of the increases happened right here. Let's see if I can point with my hook so you can see better. These large holes going down the center of the, of the square you can see you can tell that that's where I made this increase because increasing the stitches, putting more stitches into one loop kind of makes that hole bigger than say just a regular stitch. And so these are just a few of the basic common shapes that you can make uh, with increasing and decreasing. Again, some of these are just techniques as you learn different skills in crochet, it will use maybe slightly different variations of increasing and decreasing. There are many different possibilities out there. If you're experimenting for yourself, you can try just about anything. If you're going for a more professional look or following a pattern, there are the typical traditional methods for increasing and decreasing, and these are just the basics to get you started. But as with anything, it's always best to practice uh, I may have future videos going in more detail about some of these different um, shapes here. Uh, but for now, this is the basics. Just practice with what you have. Make something like this. Just increase and decrease whatever. Maybe you'll discover something. If you do, you can share it with me in the comments. Uh, but for now, that will be all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn more about crochet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and also share this video with your friends and family or on social media. And feel free to leave a comment down below. If you have any questions or suggestions or any feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time! Catch you later.